My name is Alexandra Fernando Cuevo. I'm the Head of Communications and Public Relations at the International Council of Museums. And I'm very pleased to introduce uh, my two co-hosts of, um, of this session, Jan Gro, who is the Chair of Wikimedia Czech Republic, and Clara Jokova, who is the Executive Director of Wikimedia Czech Republic. So um, I'm going to start by giving you a little bit of context on this collaboration that we started uh, with different Wikimedia chapters since last year. And all in all, how can you help protect cultural heritage from your laptop? Uh, just so you know, this session is being recorded. Um, I don't know if you want to make an additional announcement in this, no? And it will be posted in Wikimedia Commons as well for everybody to access it. So yes, starting with the introduction. Um, as you may know, uh, the International Council of Museums, one of its main missions is to protect heritage. And this mission takes shape, uh, various different shapes uh, in different types of programs. It can be programs for relief after a disaster. It can be programs like the Code of Ethics, which is for uh, maintaining excellent standards of museum practice. And one of the most well-known ones is the ICOM Red List. So what is the ICOM Red List? Um, it is, whoops, sorry. Jesus, there you go. Um, it is this that I have just here. Uh, it is a list that catalogs um, categories of objects that are at risk of illicit traffic in a certain region or country. What it does is that it helps people identify these objects and when they see them, so for example, you have here different examples of people who use this red list. Um, custom organizations, police officers, auction houses, museums. When they stumble upon one of these objects that corresponds to one of these categories, it is a red flag. That means that that object might maybe be possible that it is uh, the could fall victim of illicit traffic which means that certain actions need to be taken. So for example, for customs, they need to identify the object, perhaps seize it. For police uh, officers, that means that maybe they need to investigate a little bit more where this object comes from. And for museums, to check provenance. Uh, so these red lists have been published, been published since the year 2000. The most recent one is this one, which is for Southeast Europe. And it was published last year, is the 18th of the entire collection. And it is the one that we'll be working on later, as uh, Jan will mention. So um, the illicit traffic globally is something that we don't have specific statistics on it, such as many other illicit activities and illicit trades. Um, however, what we know is that in the past few years, um, these crimes, these uh, illegal transactions, are increasingly happening on online platforms. So that means, uh, for example, eBay, for example, Facebook Marketplace. Um, so taking this into consideration, we decided to uh, try to find a different way in which these red lists could be distributed and could be accessible online, not only for the people who use it very regularly for their work, like costume officers and policemen, but also just internet users who might be browsing eBay and find an object that is suspicious. So, we started this collaboration with another Wikimedia chapter, it was Wikimedia Switzerland, and we did it last year um, after the humanitarian and political crisis in Afghanistan. ICOM had already edited an ICOM red list for Afghanistan, so we wanted to see how we could make the information in this red list and these categories of objects as widely visible as possible. So for that, we decided to make a call for action for internet users and Wikimedians and Wikipedians to add information points about the categories of objects included in there. Um, and the result is that there are many, many, many pieces of information that can enrich the wiki universe and raise awareness on illicit traffic. Here you have listed some of them. So for example, it can be adding information about a specific type of, obje of object. So for example, in the case of Afghanistan, one of the objects was Buddha heads. Uh, so for example, adding information about that or adding images that represent them, uh, perhaps enriching a Wikipedia section on the culture of the specific country or enriching the page that uh, tackles the artistic movement from which this object uh, is from, or even 
something else that they are read as TAF, is a list of the legislation that protects the categories of objects that are inside. So there are many different ways in which one can enrich the wiki universe with information about illicit traffic and about these vulnerable objects. So I'm going to show you just an example of um, one of my contributions for this um, campaign that we did for Afghanistan. As simple as, um, I don't know, uh, very simple. One of the types of objects um, that was included in the Afghanistan Red List were manuscripts. Um, and just browsing Wikipedia, I found that there was already a list, uh, a page on pre-Islamic scripts in Afghanistan. But there was no mention about that these types of objects are vulnerable to illicit traffic. So just by adding a very, very short sentence, Afghan manuscripts in pre-Islamic Indic scripts are included in the red list of Afghanistan antiquities at risk of illicit traffic and looting. That means that if someone finds a listing of one of these objects, they Google it, Wikipedia being one of the most visited pages online, they find it and very easily they're going to see these red flags that first might, pre might prevent them hopefully from acquiring the object, but especially that they will take the necessary steps to, to uh, alert the authorities or to ask more questions about the suspicious object. So that is all in all the context of this collaboration and that we're very excited to continue. So now I'm going to uh, leave the rest to my two colleagues from uh, Wikimedia, starting, I believe, with Jan. Sure. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Alexandra. Uh, my name is Jan Groch. Um, I'm here local from Prague, and uh, I'm uh, chairman of Wikimedia Czech Republic. What a Wikimedia Czech Republic is, and what a Wikimedia Czech Republic is doing, you will see uh, after a few slides. So uh, we will we will talk about it. I will just uh, do fast back what uh, what will uh, happen in this presentation. We will, uh, in the beginning, we will talk about, a little bit about uh, Wikipedia, then about the Wikimedia, then about uh, partnerships with museums, about the Red List project, and uh, in the last part, uh, I will show you how easy it is to edit a Wikipedia. So, uh, let's go. What a Wikipedia, what a Wikipedia is, is uh, more or less something that you don't have to introduce, or I don't have to introduce. Uh, I just put there uh, one date and one picture. Uh, this person is uh, Jimmy Wells, and uh, he's a founder of uh, Encyclopedia of Wikipedia. The, the idea of the Wikipedia is easy. Uh, you have a lot of uh, encyclopedias, all of them have uh, reductions, people who are working hard on them, they are paid for it. Uh, but uh, when there is a mistake, you have to write somewhere and wait a lot of time till the new version will be released and stuff like that. In a Wikipedia, the idea is simple. You can just simply find a mistake, want to write a new article, want to do something, add a photo. You can simply do it by hitting one button. And everyone around the globe can edit, edit it. That's the basic simple idea and it works as simple as that. So in the early beginnings, a lot of people says, it doesn't, it won't work. There will be people writing stupid things. Yeah, they will, that happens, of course. But uh, there is a lot of people who are taking care of Wikipedia, and uh, again, everyone from us or from you can be this person. So uh, it's not a, a huge mass, it's uh, the world largest encyclopedia at the moment. And the date, that's the date when the, the, uh, when the first version of the website was published. On this slide, I want to uh, introduce you the whole Wikipedia family. Wikipedia is not, about, not just about one encyclopedia that everyone knows. It's about a lot of projects uh, that have something in common and something uh, different. What they have in common, they are all of these projects that you can see are under the free licenses. That means that you can take all of the information that you will find, all of the pictures, all of the texts, and you can use it in your presentation, in your thesis, in your book, wherever. Of course, it has some regulations. 
you have to mention that uh, you take the text from Wikipedia. That's it. And you have to mention the license. This license is called Creative Commons, and uh, the only thing uh, that you have to know about this license is that it's a free license. So you can use everything from Wikipedia wherever you need. Uh, the easiest uh, usage of uh, things from Wikipedia are pictures. You have some material that you are creating, some leaflet, whatever, and uh, you need a picture. Uh, and then, if you will find this picture on Wikipedia, you are 100% sure that this picture is under a free license, and you can reuse it in uh, your leaflet, for example. So you will simply take the picture, put it to your leaflet, presentation, book, whatever, you will mention that you took it from Wikipedia, and you mention the author, original one that you will find on Wikipedia, and you mention the license, as simply as this, and you can use all of the pictures that you will find. On the other hand, it works in a way that if you have a picture that can help to Wikipedia, means that you will find an article which will be empty, and there will be no pictures at all, but you have a picture that is uh, usable in this, uh, article, you can upload it. Again, it's simple, it's under a free license, you will just upload and the picture will appear on Wikipedia. You will edit into the article and then everyone else can use it freely. The same way as you can use the things from Wikipedia. Uh, the thing that I was talking about is uh, Wikimedia Commons and uh, is the real large uh, deposit of uh, all of the pictures that you can find on Wikipedia. So it's this project, Wikimedia Commons. What else? Uh, Wikipedia, as you know, as I mentioned, is about the text, about the encyclo encyclopedic articles. Then there is uh, Wikidata. Wikidata is one of the newest projects. It's uh, around 10 years old, not 20 uh, something as the Wikipedia on its own. Wikidata is a huge database, a huge database of uh, data which has some uh, specific structure. That means if you are working with the data in your work, uh, you can use this database and you can ask the database uh, for, uh, uh, for the queries, for the questions. And uh, the good thing is, uh, of course, you have a databases of, uh, I don't know, of all of the streets in Prague and you have the database of something else. But Wikimedia, com uh, I'm sorry, Wikidata are connecting all of these databases. So you can ask uh, really interesting questions. For example, what is the largest city around the globe with a woman major? Because, of course, somewhere you will find a database of the largest cities around the globe. Not difficult. Then you will find a database of the majors not a difficult probably as well, but uh, then you need a database where you have the, the genders of the, of the people who are majors. And in weak data, everything, all of these informations are connected. So you can simply uh, query and find uh, that, uh, which city is that. Uh, another example, you, uh, uh, you can find, for example, which uh, fire stations were formerly used as a churches. In Czech Republic, there are three of them, for example. So you can use queries like, like this. Yeah. Does it work with linked open data, or is it something else? Pardon? Does it work according to linked open data? Yeah, yeah. Uh, people are uploading uh, their databases to uh, Wikidata, and then the databases, uh, the volunteers, are changing a little bit the structure to put it into Wikidata structure, and then you are simply inquired. And all of these data uh, are free, so you can make your query and the results you can use on Wikipedia in your work, wherever you need. So yeah, it's a, a huge database of uh, open source data. Well, and vice versa. Pardon? And vice versa, so if someone's looking for data via Wikidata, it can end up in the link over data of our database. Uh, I'm not quite sure if I finished the question, I'm sorry. Without search, work in search, and you try to answer your search via Wikidata, but the, the data isn't there, but it is as ex 
accessible via link of the data in our database of our museum. Oh, okay. Uh, if your museum uploaded data to the Wikipedia, it will be accessible like, like this, what are you talking about? Yeah. And that's uh, like um, connecting your databases or putting your data, uploading your databases into the Wikipedia. That's one of the partnerships that uh, Clara will talk about. Okay. You can, uh, you can uh, add your data to Wikipedia and then everyone can work with it and connect it. Uh, for example, you will add uh, data about your museum who is the who is the um, head of a museum, and you can query the biggest museum around the globe with a woman as a uh, chairman of the museum. That's the way how it works. Yeah. Uh, what else is there? Uh, what is worth to mention? There is uh, there is a wiki news that uh, that should be. Uh, Free, uh, free news project where people are writing uh, news works like uh, uh, every other BBC Guardian whatever uh, you can uh, you can write uh, news articles there about the current topics uh, then there is a Wikiversity which is a platform uh, comparable to Moodle for example where you can uh, learn things uh, there are courses and uh, stuff like that uh, I will be honest, uh, the most developed projects are Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons and the Wikidata. Uh, do not expect that uh, Wikiversity courses will be as developed as, for example, Cursor courses. They will not. But uh, it's a platform that you can use for uh, your work if you will need it. And then uh, last mentioned is here in the uh, bottom right corner is a Wikimedia Foundation. There's a foundation based in the United States, San Francisco, which uh, is uh, looking after and taking care about all of these projects. I mean uh, in a way of uh, providing servers and stuff like that. I mean a technical support. The foundation is not responsible for the editing, edits, for the articles. Um, it's not a decision of someone in a foundation that this will be deleted. It's every time it's a decision of the community. I will be talking about it later. So Wikimedia is a Wikimedia foundation based in the United States. The foundation is taking care about the project. And then it's a Wikimedia Czech Republic. Wikimedia Czech Republic is a non-profit and um, we are helping the free culture. In, uh, in a Czech Republic, trying to develop the partnerships, all of the stuff. And my colleague Clara, who is uh, executive director of Wikimedia Czech Republic, will tell you a little bit more about it. I will come back. <laughs> so, hello everybody. My name is Clara Kova. I'm the executive director of uh, Czech chapter, Wikimedia Czech Republic. And uh, I would like to tell you something about our work. I hope uh, this can be um, some nice inspiration for you, because as we are chapter in Czech Republic, it's quite highly possible that you will have your own local chapter in your countries. Maybe you already uh, cooperate with some. So I will introduce you our work, and I hope maybe you will have something to, to add if you have already some experiences. So uh, we are Czech NGO, we, are, uh, we, will build, we, were, we was built on the uh, expertise of our volunteers and uh, it's been I think 14 years uh, that we are here in Czech Republic and uh, since that we developed three main program areas. The first one are educational programs as the whole big media uh, movement and the whole Wikimedia world is based on education and on free education for everyone. This is something that we that is quite important for us. Uh, we are mostly focused on uh, training uh, students, seniors, librarians, educators and uh, uh, we have different programs here in Czech Republic that are focused on this one. Uh, we are inventors of the program Seniors Write Wikipedia, which is quite uh, uh, successful 
and we can just uh, uh, we can just uh, 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 share our best uh, best experience with our senior editors because they are usually quite skillful. They are wise and they have. Um, uh, it's usually a great target for, for them to add something uh, to Wikipedia. Uh, our second programs are uh, programs for community. Community, our free editors, our, uh, our uh, photographers, uh, this is the essence of Wikimedia world. Um, the, the number of volunteers all over the world, it's, um, uh, it's amazing. It's like thousands and thousands of people who give their free time uh, to do this uh, amazing job for anyone, even though there's still lots of people who doesn't know this. <laughs> uh, so uh, what we are trying to do is support their, uh, their free work, and we are organizing different kind of uh, meetups and workshops, and we call it editatons, which means editational marathons, when we are meeting each other on one place and we are usually have some topic which we can cover better on Wikipedia or on Wikimedia Commons, that means that we are taking pictures, for example, uh, to certain topics. Um, we are trying to be open uh, to newcomers as well, so that means uh, each our event is quite open to newcomer. Uh, to newcomers and uh, be trying to teach them and to create a space for them how to edit Wikipedia. We are trying to open the diverse topics, but uh, to be true, we are still encyclopedia. That means that uh, our uh, last program is program for partnerships and we are still trying to gain free content uh, to Wikimedia projects uh, uh, by the cooperation with our partners. Uh, it can be, of course, mainly photos, text, and data that I mentioned before, because it's mm, like uh, nowadays the data is the power, right? So this is something we need, and that's why, uh, like Wikidata, it's the um, I think fastest grow Wikimedia project this uh, this time, and uh, I think it's almost uncountable how many uh, items is there. Uh, so we are primarily partners with uh, Czech uh, public institutions and uh, let's go uh, to link this because the biggest program is GLAM. So what's GLAM? <laughs> GLAM is an uh, uh, acronym for Galleries, Libraries, Archives and Museum. This is the international program that is run by many Wikimedias all over the world, even by many Wikipedians and Wikimedians itself and or themselves uh, locally. And uh, because of course uh, these kinds of public institutions are crucial for getting uh, all the information into Wikipedia. Uh, the project started uh, in 2006 when there was the big fire in Brazilian National Museum and lots of collects were uh, completely destroyed. This was the uh, initial idea that we supposed to preserve uh, this uh, valuable items, at least in the pictures, because for uh, the future generations and even for uh, uh, people all over the world, this can be quite, um, um, let's say, um, it, for them it's not easy to, <laughs> to go to each museum and to find and to see the collections uh, themselves. So just to collect all of this uh, information all over the world, it's something that uh, our very broad uh, community of volunteers can do and can help with. So uh, this cooperation in GLAM project, it's uh, based on uh, uh, mainly sharing digital collections. What uh, all of you, what all of your colleagues can do is uh, like help to illustrate the mu most viewed source of information of the web. Because Wikipedians uh, write articles, but they of course need uh, pictures. And they uh, sometimes can't uh, reach them because there, there are lots of connections that it's not uh, public or uh, so. We want to be sure that this collection will be seen and used uh, around the world. And of course, 
uh, as we mentioned before, uh, this uh, the second uh, one it's uh, frequently uh, include batch uploads to Wikimedia Commons and or to Wikidata because we are uh, highly interested in uh, Wikidata items as well. And the second uh, file, like level of cooperation, it's uh, sharing knowledge. Uh, Wikimedia projects are a strong platform for sharing knowledge of, of all types uh, to wide audience and from uh, uh, from improving coverage of topics important to institutions to creating public awareness uh, of underrepresented communities or field of knowledge. Uh, the truth is that uh, usually, or like it was in the past, it's not nowadays that much, but lots of institutions was afraid that when they um, publicize their items, uh, the level of uh, of uh, people who will come and uh, want to see the items by themselves will decrease. But uh, contrary, it's the truth, because when people know uh, what, what they uh, when they can see, uh, they the the, uh, the accessible to uh, this institution uh, was increased. So. Um, the project GLAM is huge. You can find different kind of corporations. It's very uh, diverse. You can think of any kind of cooperation you can find. I just try to point out uh, here in the bullets the, the, uh, the maybe favorite ones. Uh, the first one is hosting uh, editing events to, together uh, with our partners here, here in Czech Republic. We usually uh, ask our lecturers to come and help uh, newcomers and people who want to come to Editaton uh, with their editing, because of course this is uh, uh, this is uh, as well uh, you need a lot of experience to be able to uh, be experienced to the comedian, but we can always help. Uh, the coordination of online editing campaigns is the second one. Um, Wikipedians are quite competitive, so what we are doing are competitions as well, because uh, you always want to be the one and or the first one who uploads some picture or writes some information to Wikipedia. Uh, the uh, very like integrating data into Wikidata is the nowadays session. With all of our partners, we are trying to upload uh, their data. Uh, especially archives and museums are uh, has like um, unlimited uh, um, number of items, but, but they are very often uh, linked just to the, uh, their own uh, in, inside system. And so, with for example, National Czech uh, National Library, uh, we created a system when we can like do like the maybe something you were asked before uh, the link that goes. Uh, both ways, because of course for them then it's a uh, totally different story when uh, their database is growing with the, with the work of Wikipedians as well. And then uh, figuring out how to best embed the Wikimedia content into institutional website or exhibitions, and the last uh, um, cooperation that works uh, uh, quite well is the Glam Wiki resident. Uh, which is uh, that's the man who uh, work in the institution and links its contents to Wikimedia project. So this is quite uh, successful as well, and I can just uh, I can just recommend uh, to institution to trying to do something like that with your local Wikimedia chapter. So uh, I will uh, follow up to uh, information from Alexandra. Uh, when she asked uh, us uh, to be here on the conference and to present uh, our work, we actually uh, find out the whole new project. We are quite inspired by, by, the, uh, by their uh, Afghan cooperation with Wikimedia Switzerland, and we created the Red List of Southeast uh, European Cultural Object at Risk project. The start of the project is now here on the, uh, on the conference. Uh, if you have time and you are interested in, you can be part of our workshop later. Uh, what we want to do now uh, as Wikimedia Czech Republic, we want to address our partners within the CE region and we want to 
uh, we want to um, uh, like add them to this project locally because here at least contains 10 different countries. So we believe our partners, our Wikimedia chapters uh, from these countries can be part of that. Uh, and uh, we want to support this project with different kind of events. It can be local, local glam partnership, it can be local events, uh, the editatons I've mentioned before. Uh, we want to then reaching out to local uh, Wiki communities. And this community is like worldwide because never mind uh, what language you use, you can always write something about the, pro the uh, items that are listed uh, within the red list. So it's about writing an article, uploading photos uh, to comments and adding information to Wikidata. What we need now and what we will be focused on our workshop is to identify the list of the goal object uh, and articles and uh, illustrative pictures that are missing uh, in Wikipedia and Wikimedia Commons because this is like the best challenge for Wikipedians than just to cover it in uh, these blank uh, spaces that this uh, red links in the Wikipedia. So uh, let me introduce you to or like uh, invite you to our workshop that starts. Uh, at quarter two, three. Thank you. All right. Uh, thanks a lot to Clara. And now I will start this part with a three important questions. Uh, who already found a mistake on Wikipedia? Raise your hands, please. Most of you do. Yeah. You never find a mistake on Wikipedia? You think that Wikipedia is totally correct? <laughs> All right, who edited Wikipedia? Who hit the edit button? Oh, cool. Much better than I expected. All right. Uh, great, great job. Uh, and the last question, who is speaking Italian? No one. All right, that's it. OK, uh, we will see how we will manage it. So how do Wikipedia works? Uh, the main core, as I already mentioned, is that everyone can edit. It's easy as uh, hitting the edit button, and uh, even now, we uh, in this presentation, in a few minutes, we will we will write a really simple article on Wikipedia. Uh, the another core part is that uh, community uh, is a community decision process. Uh, on uh, Wikipedia, there is a, no one with a superpower who is telling like. Uh, this is correct, this is incorrect, delete this, write this. The community is leading the whole process. Uh, there are, for example, when there is an article that should be deleted because of some problematic content, uh, or uh, it's uh, not uh, important, it's not uh, following the guidelines for importance, there is a community process of a deleting. The users, or the Wikipedia editors, are discussing it and they are making the decision. This decision process is uh, different on each uh, language version, but on each version there is a process like this. There is a community who is uh, taking care of the of that language variant of a Wikipedia. Uh, of course, there are the administrators uh, who are uh, doing the actions, but the administrator don't have a power, like extra power, to delete whatever he wants. He can technically delete it. But then another administrator, if it's without no consensus, another administrator will come and oh, upload it or uh, restore it, and it will be again on Wikipedia. So everything is based on a community <coughs> decision. And uh, the last uh, core is that uh, no one is paid. Uh, a lot of people who are editing Wikipedia are volunteer, uh, are editing uh, voluntarily. So uh, there is uh, no one like a paid editor of Wikipedia. Uh, about the quality control, uh, there are two levels of a quality control. Uh, the first one is called recent changes. Recent changes is a really long list of uh, changes that made uh, that were made on Wikipedia in the last few minutes, hours, whatever. Uh, a lot of Wikipedians are opening this list and checking what is happening there. And it's someone uh, changed, for example, that uh, example that a Prague is a capital of the uh, Czech Republic, and someone changed it that Prague is a capital of Slovakia, 
So everyone knows, okay, this is a problematic edit, and everyone can revert it, put it into the former uh, former um, former text, like uh, back from Slovakia to the Czech Republic, Prague schedule of Czech. Uh, this is uh, for the vandalisms that you can see on the first side. The, uh, then there is a second step, and it's called watch list. People who are editing Wikipedia on a regular basis, uh, they are creating their own watch lists of articles. They are, um, to this watch list, people are putting the articles that they are interested in. Me personally, I am interested in uh, transportation. So uh, I have a, in my watch list, I have a lot of articles about uh, trains, about the locomotives, stuff like that. And then if someone changed that uh, this locomotive is a car, Everyone will see it and uh, put it uh, in, uh, back to the order uh, in the recent changes. But when someone will edit an article about a locomotive or about a museum, museum is probably a better example, and he will uh, change the, um, the head of a museum, and he will change a name, or the editor will change a name, uh, then in the recent changes people will be, hmm, let's go to the source, I'm not quite sure, but when you are working in this museum, you know exactly what, it, uh, what the head of a museum is, and you have this article in your watch list. That's a second part of a control. You are an expert on the topic, and uh, you can check the, the fact. You can put a source. Everything, everything on a Wikipedia should has a, have a source. <coughs> or you can uh, take a book from a library and check it, uh, but, but it, goes, it goes deeper. Uh, to the, in a watch list, you mostly have the articles that you know something about or you are interested in, and you are seeing how, they are, how people are developing these articles. And the nominations for deletion, uh, uh, I was talking about it uh, on a previous slide, it's about the community processes. No one can delete something like this every time there is a discussion about it. Okay, uh, one thing that I want to I wanna show you, uh, do not imagine Wikipedia as an encyclopedia that is somewhere printed, somewhere on the internet, and uh, never changed. This is the speed of uh, editing in Wikipedia. Uh, you can see it's uh, five times faster, uh, but uh, you can see who and where is editing the Wikipedia. In a moment, the most edits are in uh, Europe, it's because of the daytime here. Uh, if we will have this presentation at midnight, the most of the edits will be in the United States because of their, their data. And you can see on this picture even the language versions. So in Europe there is a lot of different language versions that are edited in the moment. In the US it's mostly the, the US uh, or the English version. Uh, what you can see here in a Japan, a lot of edits um, uh, show, are shown is because the Japanese Wikipedia is quite uh, quite uh, quite huge and a lot of edits is made there. So this is uh, Wikipedia. This, these are edits right now in the moment. Time uh, about the, about the problems in uh, in edit in Wikipedia sometimes happen. We'll just check. Yeah. Some, uh, sometimes it happens that someone edited Wikipedia and uh, it's not in the best way. Here is a, here is a good example. Uh, I'm, uh, this example is uh, from a source uh, from a Czech server, Lupa.cz, and it's about the uh, deletion of a Communist Party membership of uh, one famous Czech person, and the article said that it wasn't successful. So sometimes happen even this. Uh, on Wikipedia, we need a source for everything. So in this sentence, it was written that uh, this person was a member of a communist party, and then this, uh, this thing disappeared. You can see it's not in a new version. Uh, here, it's uh, written that uh, not uh, important data were deleted. Uh, this happen from time to time, uh, but uh, Wikipedia has a history. You can, uh, you, can see what is, uh, you can see what is in a history, and you can go back. 
Here is unfortunately just a screenshot, but uh, here you can uh, hit Zrušit Editaci, which, which in English means to uh, revert, to undo the edit, and uh, hit it by this button, it will get to the previous version. And that's exactly what happened in this case, because it has a source, and it has a great source, so it's an information that should be on Wikipedia. So then the newspaper article appeared that a uh, deletion of Communist Party membership of Ladislav Spacek was not successful. Wikipedia protected, or editors of Wikipedia protected the Wikipedia from the deletion, deletion of the information without a reason. All right, uh, this was a theory, and uh, now in a future slides, I want to show you uh, the hands-on part, how to how to edit a Wikipedia. Uh, here is a great place for your questions. If you have any questions about the thing that I was talking about or Clara was talking about, feel free to ask now. Then I will show you a little bit more practice things. Do you have any? Or we can uh, move on. All right, let's go. So hands-on part. I will work on a, on a Czech Wikipedia, on, a, on one that article. It will be really short. I prepared it. Uh, and what I want to show you probably I will show you the recent changes. These are the recent changes. And here you can see is the first uh, layer of the production. Here I can show you what is happening on a Wikipedia. That a someone deleted article, someone added an article. I will open, for example, this one. And I can see what is happening there. This is a little bit, if you work with a code, uh, you will be uh, probably uh, better in uh, finding or searching what is happening there. Here I see that someone had a reference. I mean someone added serves. So this edit looks quite nice. Someone someone helped to, to Wikipedia. Someone added more information. This looks fine as a, as a great edit. Uh, of course, when you are uh, doing or checking the recent changes, you are checking more deep. Uh, I'm checking, uh, checking it just really fast to show you. So here, every edit on Wikipedia is checked like this. If something is wrong, I was talk talking about the uh, button to undo the change. I will just hit it and it will get back to the previous version. This is something that everyone can do. Even you, even non-registered person can do this. That's the, that's the main idea of Wikipedia. You don't have to register. If you will, don't want to register, don't want to put any of your personal data, you can simply edit as an IP address, and uh, let's see, you can see it here. This is my IP address. I'm not, I'm not registered, and I can add it. Okay, here I will use a recent changes to find uh, to find a page that I created a few minutes ago. This page that I created uh, is uh, in my personal space, I mean it's not uh, public, it's not an article yet, it's just my notes. So I prepared the notes uh, and uh, based on those notes we can write an, write an article. I will open it in a new tab. Here is an article about uh, Maria Pospisilova. Maria Pospisilova is a Czech, um, it's a Czech painter. She was born in uh, 1905 uh, in uh, Novi Bijov, which is like one and a half driving distance, uh, one and a half hour driving distance from track. And uh, she has an article on uh, Italian Wikipedia only, because uh, she was uh, she was living in uh, Italy some part of her life. But she don't have an article on English Wikipedia. She don't have an article on a uh, Czech Wikipedia. And it, this is something that uh, that we should change. So, unfortunately, that is why I was asking about Italian. No one is able to help me with translations. 
Okay. So I uh, so I translated the, the things that I understand. So Maria Pospisil, I was born in Novi Bicho, she was a year, and she uh, died in Lugano, and uh, she was a Czech painter, and her first exhibition was in year 1933 in Rome. That's what we know about her, and uh, now we will try to, to write an article. So how to, how to do it? Uh, the easiest way is to write to the search what we are looking for. We are looking for Maria Bospišilová, painter, but she don't have an article. That means that it's a red link. Red links are bad. Red link means that there is a no article. Blue links are for Wikipedia and it's the best. But we have a red link, so we will open the article. And here will appear something that looks like a Microsoft Word. It's an easy editor where you can, where you can uh, edit a, or write an article. So I will just copy my text. Which, and this text doesn't look like a Wikipedia article. It doesn't have um, any parts in bold, it doesn't have a link, which is one of the most important things. So we will try to make a link. The easy, I will zoom it a little bit, that you will be able to see more of my Twitter, okay. So, how to do it? Here is a, here is a year of her birth that should be a link. So I will just hit a link button, right at that that I understand it, and I will link it. And that's it. Now, if someone will want to check what happened, what else happens in this year, someone can. All right, here is a second year. And done. For you will be important or interested in this link, it's Novi Bijov. Uh, it's a Czech city, small one. So I will link it as well, and now I will publish the page, just to check what happened. I just wrote that I will add more data later, because It's too short. We have to add more information. All right, so what else we can add? Uh, this is one of the things on Wikipedia. Uh, the article should be an encyclopedic article. It means that it not should be like a dictionary, uh, dictionary, not article, but a, like a one or a one sentence in a dictionary, it should be longer. So we can uh, add a little bit more text. Uh, she was studying in Prague and Berlin. That's another information, so. She studied in Prague and Berlin. And we will try it one more time. To try it again. We have to edit edit it later, but uh, we can we can see how the article works. So here is an article about Maria Pospisilová, and here is a link that is most important thing on Wikipedia. If you are looking for something and you don't know where the Novi Bijov is, 
you will simply hit it. Here you find the article in Czech, which is not so interesting for you, and you can change to English. So here you are checking the another, another things. Now we just with is a town in the Hradec uh, district uh, and region in Czech Republic. So these are the links. Now, what else to do with an article to do it in a more readable version? We'll use some formatting. We will use a little bit more links. We will try to delete this part. We will see if we will be successful. Oh yeah. So now we have the, uh, the fastest article ever. Uh, of course, this article needs much more work. This is just the beginning, but uh, the beginning that it's uh, necessary because someone uh, need to encourage another Wikipedians to edit it. When the Wikipedians see that, that there is an article that should be extended, it works for them as a red flag. They will extend it. So don't worry, don't worry to make a mistakes. I see that uh, here I have a, a number eight instead of a, a letter A, but uh, we, will, we will edit it. You can edit it right now. I can edit it a minute later and I will do it because I don't want to have a mistake uh, in my article or someone else will be faster, we will see. And this is exactly how the Wikipedia works. It's uh, not work of one person, the articles are growing. If I will open a random article and uh, see the history of the article, I will uh, I will see so many edits. This is exactly how it works. People are developing the articles. So yeah, Wikipedia is a live organism. Okay, now it's place for a workshop invitation. Mm -hmm. So maybe, can you hear me here? Okay, perfect. So now until 4 p.m. we're going to go to room 3.1. It's a smaller room and we're going to be there with our laptops and we're going to put into practice what we've learned just now about how to edit and add information to Wikimedia on Wikipedia and we're going to distribute to you um, the, if you want to join us, I hope that you're not very tired, um, we will go distribute to you the iPhone red list for Southeast Europe, as I mentioned at the beginning, which is the most recent one, and it will be used as a base for some edits that we might find, so we might do a little bit of investigating of what is missing, what can be added, and as I mentioned in the beginning, a very small change can have a really big visibility uh, for this. So you're very welcome to join us. It's room, I repeat, 3.1, third floor. Thank you very much for coming everybody. Despite, and thank you again, because I know that it was the lunch break. So thank you for making uh, the effort to come. Thank you everybody. Yeah, that's it. Uh, that's the end of the presentation. So if you have any questions, we have, I don't know how much time we have, probably not much. We have two minutes. Two minutes. Okay, it's okay. So, fast questions. If you have more questions or you're afraid to ask now, uh, I encourage you to visit the workshop and uh, we'll go much deeper than these five minutes that we wrote a super fast article. So, yeah, you're welcome to the workshop. Really nice to talk to you and uh, see you on the lobby or at a workshop or next presentations. Thank you. Thanks a lot.